Okay, it's on. Hi. Hi. Okay, this morning I'm getting ready to put some paint remover in this part, in this part of the closet. Yeah. Over here. This is the floor of the closet. I've been chipping away with uh, a hammer, a chisel, with scrapers, different scraping implements. Uh, what is on the floor is a kind, maybe a kind of tar-based adhesive. Mm -hmm. uh, that held down some linoleum, so, uh, some green sheet linoleum that was put in, you know, probably 50 years ago. Um, if you come over here, you'll see the part of the closet that's cleaned. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's the part I did yesterday. And so today I'm going to use the rest of the paint remover, and I'm just going to lay it on thick on the other part of the closet. I'll show you what I've been doing. These are the implements. Uh, come down here. Mm -hmm. Why don't you come down here? You'll see. You'll see. This is the old adhesive. Yes. See, and I left a layer of it here with these layers. Mm -hmm. These over here. Uh, this is the carpet, the padding, the tan linoleum, the green linoleum, the linoleum adhesive, and then this is the floor. Right. Okay. And if you look right here, you'll see that what this adhesive has left behind is a thick kind of thing like this and it's very 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 difficult to scrape it away or or to use a scraper see I can use a scraper and a hammer and I can I can chip away at it like this uh, but basically it doesn't you see it comes up very grudgingly very stubborn now sometimes you can get a little there we go see and so it leaves this is about um, less than a sixteenth of an inch. This is well, maybe between one thirty-second of an inch and one sixteenth of an inch. Right. It feels like and smells like a kind of tar-based, you know, hardened goo that's been on the floor. Now, if I had if I had really sharp uh, scrapers, there we go. Okay. So the more of this I can do with this dry method, the less mess I have right. cleaning it up. Uh, but in the, the closet, it's just very difficult. It's difficult to get to this. It, it's easier to get to this out here on the floor. In right. the closet, it's very difficult. So what I did this morning for the first hour, this one between 8.30 and 9.30, basically, I've, I've gone in here and I've scraped the thickest parts down to where they're, they're thinner now. Right. And I'm hoping that uh, the last of the the, the last of the um, paint remover will lift the rest of this off. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that and I I'm reluctant to use the paint remover because it's very very messy. You put some down, and then you know all all that goop that the that the chemical removes has to go somewhere. Right. You know, and so. So it becomes, what happens is you end up having this big uh, mess of mud yes. that you then have to soap up, you have to soak it up in towels or bounty or paper towels or rags or something. I've got a tub of old rags over here. Right. I have, I have a big towel and I have a small cloth and I've got some bounty paper towels that I used yesterday that are still pretty good. Right. Um, and so... So with that and with this, this is the, the stripper. Um, it's a chemical stripper. Uh, it says it works in 15 minutes. For this, it takes about 20, 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, but, and then what you do is you come in with some steel wool. You put on gloves and you use some steel wool and some mm -hmm. mineral spirits to neutralize it. Right. And then it's when you have neutralized it that it becomes this big sloppy mess. Mm -hmm. And so I've got a little bit of mineral spirits in here from what I did yesterday. I'm right. going to use this. And so so I'm going to be doing this part here. I'm going to if I have enough of this stripper, I'm going to bring it out to here. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm, I basically just want to clean the floor of the closet today okay. so that maybe by tomorrow uh, it'll be dry, it'll be clean, maybe it'll be sanded, and we can we can put the stuff back in the closet. Oh, okay. So that, that's what I'm working on today. Okay. Thank thanks. you, Eddie. 
What's all this? <laughs> What's all this? I'm. Uh, I was able to. I was able to strip a large part of the floor today, mm -hmm. and now. Now I'm. I'm just putting some white paint around the edges of this to see how it'll look. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this over here. I'm doing. I'm doing a rather quick, a little quick job. I'm getting a few drips, but I can take those up tomorrow after they dry. The white trim paint makes the wall paint look, <laughs> look like a drab off-white. Yes, well, let's see. What I did today was, uh, you know, I, I scrubbed, I used paint stripper and stripped um, a lot of this uh, tar or bitumen based adhesive, mm -hmm. which is this sort of dark brown, black, uh, thick layer that, of, of stuff that's on the, on the floorboards. Um, I was able to use some, you know, a chemical stripper along with, you know, soap and water and a wire brush and a lot of effort. And I basically cleaned up this area around here. And uh, so, what I did was I, I basically took out the shelves, I took down the doors, I, I took off the doors of the closet and the shelves, and I'm, I'm basically just sort of cleaning it up around the edges with a fresh coat of paint. Mm -hmm. uh, in part because I, want, I wanted to be able to see how the floor would look as it is next to a, you know, a sharp outline. Yeah. Because it was, you know, until I, until I painted it, um, you know, the the baseboards and the and the door frames and everything were, were really rough and kind of messy. It was it was hard to see where the floor ended and the walls and the door frames began. Mm -hmm. So I want I wanted to paint paint in uh, the baseboards and the door frames and the walls near the floor to to basically make a distinction. So okay okay. Thank you, Eddie. Uh, you're filming this, huh? Yeah. Uh, you don't, you don't I have... just start after you said make. <laughs> well, okay, now it's starting to get moist. Why is I have a... I have a tub of joint compound. Yeah. And, and it's been sitting... It's been sitting in our apartment for about two years. Yeah. And we brought it over here. Even though I pounded, what you do to keep it fresh is you put this on and then you pound it down with a rubber mallet. Right. And I did that and then I opened right. it. But inevitably, there's always going to be some air getting in and th there's usually a top layer of the joint compound is going to dry out. Yeah. So you want to get down to the moist part that's still, yeah. still mushy and has some moisture in it. Yeah, I think the air gets in when it gets cold and yeah, and yeah, sealed and this, when it's hot. Yeah. And so what I did this morning was, if you want to pan, maybe, yeah, look up. Uh, I had to remove the shelf supports from this closet. Yeah. Because uh, for our purposes, they're in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. And they were anchored in with four-inch nails. This one? Yeah, and I had to use a crowbar and a hammer. And, you know, and I, I really had to manipulate the... The nails out of there, and of course that left some uh, some dents in the plaster. Yes. And so I'm going to repair those. I'm going to patch those dents this morning with this joint compound. Okay. And this is a really easy joint compound to use. Yeah. It's a kind of, you know, it's kind of like a, a moist clay. And yes. You just you just put it in, and it's got like a light pink color. Actually, it used to be bright pink. So, you know, it loses some of its color as it dries out a little bit. And I'm, I'm just going to, so I'm going to get the bigger, bigger putty knife. I'm going to use both putty knives, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to fill these dents in. And this, <laughs> this hanger bar support would not move. Mm -hmm. it, this one screw holding it in will not come out. Yeah. Uh, and it, it was down here. Right. And so because of that one screw, I was able to move it up. 
because one of my my shelves in here are going to be every 15 inches. Yeah. And the one at 60 inches is going to be right here. Yeah. So. Yeah. The reason why I wouldn't move is that the screw head was stripped. Yeah, the screw head was stripped. It's probably three inch screws, wasn't yeah. it? Well, I'll tell you, it's when I unscrewed, I unscrewed the other one that was at the other end yesterday. Yeah. And I put it, uh, I taped it to the the hanger pole that was in here. Yeah. And I put it downstairs in the basement. And it had two short screws and two long screws. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I guess that serves some purpose. I, I don't know what it is. The but. short screws is for the plaster and the long screws is for the stud. Right, right. Although I, I don't think this is anchored to any stud. Okay. I could be wrong. But. Okay, so, so this is what I'm doing this morning. Okay. Thank you, Eddie. Go. Oh. oh, hi, Eddie. <laughs> What Hi. I did today, uh, or for, yeah, most, most of the day, is uh, I patched a lot of the, uh, the holes in the, in the walls of the closet with, uh, with joint compound plaster. And also, um, uh, I removed the doors from these two doorways yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, after I removed the doors, I also realized that the doors had... Um, a molding material, uh, which is called a door stop, uh, or door stop molding, around the edges. So I took that and I put it in here. And what I've done is I've created cleat supports along the wall for shelves. And so I'm going to cut, I'm, I'm going to take the doors, the doors which were solid panel doors, I'm going to basically cut them down uh, into a size for shelves, uh, for where, where you see the cleat supports that I've nailed to the walls. Yes. So, huh. so it's basically a way of recycling the materials that we have. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, I just finished <laughs> all the cleats, and I'm, I made the cleats out of doorstop molding, uh, which, which, you know, you find in, or, around, around most old uh, doors yes. and, and new doors. Yes. As well, so, so anyway, so we're gonna have uh, when this is finished, we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five shelves mm -hmm. for our, and and this shelf was already in here. So right. So I just I just put the cleat up in there. Um, there were cleat supports in the closet, but they were they were in the wrong place for us to have room for our books. Mm -hmm. So I, I very carefully tried to uh, take the cleats out all in one piece, but, but someone decided to put the cleats in with big four-inch nails. And so what happened was when I, as carefully as I was trying to, to remove the cleats from the wall, they would just break up mm -hmm. because those big nails were holding them in. I used um, much smaller nails for this for this job, I use these small two inch. Uh, these are basically uh, paneling nails. Yeah, they're you, not that heavy. They're yeah. not that big. And but, but they, they do, hold the weight. They do the job. You know, I put five nails in the long strips and two nails in the short strips. It'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Anyway, that's that. And so that's what I'm doing today. And uh, I'm going to go downstairs and see if I can uh, do the measure. You know, basically just plot out the measurements and cut up the doors and, right. and see if they'll function. I don't know if cutting up the doors and using them as shelves will function or not. Um, these, it, they're doors like this, and these are solid panel doors, and I thought they were hollow core doors, but they're not. They're yeah. solid core doors, and so I don't know what's inside, and I, I don't know if they'll cut that easily or if if it'll be uh, too difficult to do, right? But that's um, that's an experiment I'm willing to do. So, okay. Okay. Thank you, Eddie. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me open. The, I'll open the door. You cut a door in two. Yes, I did. I just <laughs> I just finished. This is the top of it. Yeah. And. I, I cut off, I trimmed off the top of it, which is up at your end. Mm -hmm. This is where the doorknob and the latch used to be. Right. And then I cut it 
in half lengthwise using a saw and my muscle, my mm -hmm. arms. I noticed that they are a little... Yes, there are... They're not really hollow, but they're like laterals. Right. There's, there's a frame on the inside of this door. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a frame all the way around, and then there are these uh, slats about, yeah. about every 18 or 20 inches or so. And so that's what holds it together. And um, I'm going to cover it with something okay. uh, when I get upstairs. But right now I, just, I need to take a sanding block with uh, some rough sandpaper on it. Right. Which is right over here. And I'm just going to sand, I need to sand down the rough parts. Okay. Uh, but anyway, I got, I got two shelves now. Okay. And then tomorrow, I'll work on that door. Oh, okay. Because this is, you know, <laughs> this is a little rough and it's a little slow. I guess when I was done, I could take all the books up. Yes, we'll do that. Get them uh, out of this moist, damp place. Yes, yes, out of the moist, damp first floor raised basement, as we call it in New Orleans. This is the ground level. Yeah, so, okay. Okay. Well, anyway, that's what, I, what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm getting ready to clean this up, so... Okay. Okay, thank you, Eddie. Sure. <laughs> I'm taping pieces of plain white paper together. Yeah. And... I'm doing it very carefully. Yeah. You see, yeah. So I've got two eight and a half by eleven pieces of paper, very, very precisely lined up and taped, so uh -huh. that they become an eleven by seventeen. And I'm going to do about six of these, and then I'm going to tape each one of those together. I'm going to have this big sh sheet of paper, and I'm going to use it to wrap around this shelf that's behind right. me, uh -huh. and that shelf is going to go into uh, the shelf closet that I've been working on for the last couple of days. Okay. That shelf looks like a piece of abstract art. Yes, it does. One, I'll show you one side of it. You know, the front and one side was painted white. Yeah. Uh, but this was the shelf that was all the way up in the top yeah. of the closet, so we didn't see what was on the other side. And I... I didn't even know this was here until I cleaned up. Uh, there was a thick layer of dust and dirt on this. And underneath is this sort of dark blue-green and a kind of light green. That, yeah. That have just been kind of, you know, it's extra paint that was rolled together. And I, I, I sanded it and scraped it in a few places to scrape off clotted bubbles of paint. And now it kind of looks like an abstract <laughs> painting on a, pe on a piece of wood. And it, it's a very nice wood. I had, I had to trim some of it off so that it would match the other the width of the other shelves. Yeah, maybe it could hawk its modern art. I, well, well, it could, you know, it's <laughs> it's art made from found objects, and yeah. it has a history. So, yeah. so yes, there's that. But for now, I'm, I'm going to cover it, I'm going to cover it up with, with white paper. Oh, okay. As, I'm using the white paper as a shelf liner. Okay. Okay. July 2nd, 2013. No, it's July 3rd, 2013. Let's see what Andrew's doing, shall we, Kitty? Hey, what are you doing? Well, hello. Hi, Eddie. Hi. <laughs> I'm cleaning books. Oh. We have several hundred books, somewhere in the neighborhood of 400, 450 books. Yeah, you've been doing this for the past three days. Yes, I have. And it sounds easy, but it's very time-consuming, and it's very slow-going. Here's, here's a, a, a section of, of the books we own. Mm -hmm. This is the stack that hasn't been cleaned. So what I do, I have, my, I have an old broad paintbrush that I use as a dusting brush. I have a, a kitchen towel. I've got a sponge. A squirt bottle, uh, which is you know a, a water drinking bottle, and I've got a bucket. Oh. Um, basically, the way you clean a book without ruining it yeah. is you take a sponge, mm -hmm. you wet the sponge, you squeeze it out as much as you can, and what you do is you dust you dust the book. Yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of 
There's a lot of dust and cobwebs and grime. The, the thing is, in the, in the apartment we rented for seven years over on South Pierce Street, the kitchen was not vented. And so as a result, these books were sitting on the floor in the dining room where mm -hmm. we really couldn't access them. They were sitting on the floor the way, the way I have them over here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that's a good temporary solution. The problem is it became more than temporary. And so, you know, it's very difficult to get to books when they're, when they're stacked in, in stacks like this. Mm -hmm. You need to get to them when they're like this, over here. Mm -hmm. What I did was I, I took off the doors of this, this double closet, right, and I basically cut the doors in half and trimmed them down and made shelves out of them. Mm -hmm. And so, as you can see, uh, these are all the books I've cleaned over right. the last few days. Mm -hmm. um, and the top shelf are almost all yours. Yes. And they're all things having to do with like history, and environmental crisis. Uh, there's Silent Spring by Rachel Carson. Uh, there's Collapse by Jared Diamond. Uh, the World Without Us is, you know, a theoretical treatise on what would happen to the Earth if humans disappeared. Yes. And basically, the answer is that the Earth would do just fine without humans, which uh -huh. is pretty bad. Yeah. And then down here. Um, We've got a lot of, uh, these are more of your books. These, these here have to do with political opinion and critique. Right. Um, let me see. I think, yeah, you got a Jim Hightower book in here. Right. Uh, gotcha Capitalism. You know, that, that's very timely. And then, then you've got these sort of bl move into history and history critique. Right. And, and then these down here are a fiction series uh, known as alternate history, yeah, and, you, and uh, these are like what if books, yeah, um, and like you know, like what if the South won the Civil War? What if the Germans and the Japanese won World War Two? And and those, so it's it's fiction along those lines, yeah. And then these are all your cookbooks, yeah, and they go up to about here, and then here's like home remedy books, yeah, and then. Uh, this is cooking in right. here. These are cookbooks. Right. And then, and then there's, there's like cooking and cleaning. And then these are humor, humor and novelty books. Right. Here. Roll them. Okay. And so, so the, these are humor and novelty books. Um, and then this group of paperbacks in here, I'm going to come around here. Uh, this is just simply good writing. This is fiction and a couple of nonfiction books. Uh, that are written by really good writers, and they're just a joy to read. I have a little bit of Annie Dillard in here, Pilgrim at Tinker Creek. Shadow Divers by Robert Curson was a book I heard part of it on radio reading for the blind one day, and it just sounded re like a really good read, and I've yet to finish reading. <laughs> I heard the first two or three chapters. Uh, so I need to read that. And then we've got some Armistead Maupin. I've got a collection. This was probably a textbook, Stories to Remember. And it's got stories by O. Henry, uh, by Edgar Allan Poe, Victor Hugo, Leo Tolstoy, Will James, so, all the way up to Isaac Asimov. Uh, that's, those are 20th century authors. And then... And these are kind of reference books in here. History of Mathematics, uh, British English A to Z, uh, Courses of Instruction, 1998-99. That's for Harvard University. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's just interesting reading in itself. Yes. And then these are a couple of, of readings in Indiana State history that I never even knew about. I grew up in Indiana and never knew. Yeah. Uh, this is like a lot of Indiana's historical dirty secrets in here. Uh -huh. And then there's some Ben Franklin books, books about Boston. These are mostly topographical architectural books about Boston. And then... Um, oh, and then these three John Taylor Gatto books. These, these are about education reform right. and a book by Maria, uh, Maria Montessori also about education reform. Okay, and then all these in here are architecture books. These are my architecture books and some of them are your architecture books. Yes. Uh, David Macaulay uh, does this wonderful series about how Roman cities were built, how cathedrals were built, what have uh, underground systems. 
of modern day cities. Great streets um, um, is yours, and Plan of Chicago is yours. This is yours. Yeah, ma the magnificent builders, Maryland's colonial mansions, um, and then I think these are the ones. All that, the, the all the rest of mine uh, till about. Um, I guess. Um, you mean all the rest are mine? Yeah. Right? Well, well, it doesn't matter. We share them. Yeah. Okay, but anyway, the, so it's a mix of. But but these are all architecture related books. The, this this little bit right in here is about how to draw architectural drawings. Right. Um, and then the rest of these are uh, these in here are about houses, specifically small houses. And then then it sort of gets into uh, architectural criticism and essays. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this has to do with um, the failure of suburban sprawl and how. Um, you know, real estate development after World War II, uh, while it held a lot of promise and it made things very convenient for people who could drive, it also kind of alienated people from one another. And there's been a, 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 a more or less a loss, a, a sense of loss in regards to community. Right. We have less community and more conveniences. Right. Um, but uh, so so the, these are along those lines. Then there's James Howard Kunzler, who is a lot more entertaining in his lectures online, mm -hmm. uh, but his books are worth reading. He, yeah. he, he has very interesting ideas. Then these in here, these are just about New Orleans. Um, this is Frenchman, Desire, and Good Children is a, a book about how the, the streets of New Orleans came to get their names. And this, this is The Great Deluge by Douglas Brinkley, which is about Katrina. And these, these are Katrina books. And then this is about the street. Okay. And so the, these down here, these are all like uh, interior design and style books. Mm -hmm. These have to do with painting and decorating and the style of houses and, and things like that. And then that sort of segues into uh, office systems, which is about office furniture. And then what's going to go in here is going to be the books that I'm working on over here. And right. these all have to do with with carpentry, you know what I'll do, I'll just, if you want to see, these have to do with carpentry, house building, and home repair. And mm -hmm. that's these books and these books here. These have more to do with home repair. These books down here have more to do with house building. Right. And so, and then these books here all have to do with visual art and right. pursuing uh, visual art endeavors and visual art as a career. And so that's where I am. I started, I started with this stack with, you know, the Homeowner's Guide to Carpentry and Cabinets and mm -hmm. Cabinetry. So. Right. so that's where I am. And what I do is I, like I said, I brush, I brush them off. And if they're really dirty, I take this damp sponge. It's been wrung almost all the way out. It's just a little bit damp. And I give this a good rub down. Like this spine and I take this and I, I make sure it's dry and what this does is this, this cleans them up really nicely and it makes it, it makes it so that they're almost like new when they, you know when they're nice and clean like this you know and also you know if there's any coffee stains or beverage stains you know this is my chance to get rid of them and I even go in here get rid of like you know some just, just, you know, like little bits of dust and grime that have and gathered. And not. Yeah, because like I said, we the the apartment we, we rented for seven years that was two and a half blocks from here. Um, it was a nice apartment, but the kitchen was not vented, and as a result, a lot of these books have a very thin layer of grime or mm -hmm. grease on them. And there also no room for bookshelves. Yeah, and we had no room for bookshelves at the other place. So, so I'm cleaning them. This guy will go right over here next to office systems. And so, you know, basically, you know, house building, home repair, carpentry, shelf building will segue into office systems furniture, which segues into decorating and interior design and house painting and... and painting, colors, and themes, and then that goes up to basically 
Um, these are a couple of books about big historic mansions, and that leads up to basically the, the architecture and building section. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, all the books that are near each other are kind of related to one okay. another. Okay, thank you, Eddie.